Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University and Champions, issue number three. This is a badass cover. And this is, look, just to, to reiterate on what I said in my This Week in Comics, this is one of those covers that a lot of people who just get comic books, they never even open the comic book, they just get them because of the gorgeous covers, this is one of them. This is absolutely one of those. Uh, your name doesn't have to be Alex Ross or uh, Stanley Archer of Lau for people to love your covers. I'm just saying. All right, so let's get started on this. All right, we got beat the, uh, excuse me, beat the dead. I think that's what this. It's hard to read this thing. Wow, it's oh, beat the devil. There we go. That actually makes more sense. <laughs> uh, anyway, this is beat the devil part three, saved and the damned. Uh, the writer is Jim Zub. The artist is Stephen Cummings. Color artist, Mencio Menez and Federico Blee. Oh, great. Great. We can almost guarantee that at some point in the, in the comment section of this video, Federico Blee is going to make fun of me. And if he doesn't, I'll actually be really disappointed because I look forward to those uh, letters. VCs uh, Clayton Cowles. Back to the beginning of the book to see that Kim Jacinto and Rain Barreto did this gorgeous cover. And there are two variant covers, one by Elsa Charitier and Sarah Stern, and another by Mike McCone and Rachel Rosenberg. All right, let's get into this, guys. First off, we start off in Alaire State Park, which is going to substitute as the danger room for this team of the champions. Uh, that's kind of cool. <laughs> uh, Alaire State Park is actually in New Jersey, and... It's uh, it's not Parkway exits away. It's actually down uh, Route 18 from where I used to live, and uh, almost at the end, second from last exit there. And um, yeah, the, the the final exit is actually Wall Township, which it's right next to the Wall Township Stadium. I went to a single demolition derby monster truck rally there. Not my cup of tea, but I can't say it's not my cup of tea. But it's not my usual forte. But I do enjoy once in a while going and see the massive destruction. Just saying. I'm just saying. And Alaire State Park is pretty much right next to it. And it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. So, yeah. And it's funny. I don't recognize this particular area, but I did look at this image, you know, these images to see if it was going to be a specific area. Because I know that Jim Zub is very careful about uh, paying attention to the detail of actual places of, of real places uh he actually gets upset not, not i don't know about upset but he actually does get bothered if um a detail of someone's homeland is out of whack or, or just out of sync isn't correct uh and that that's cool that's cool like he, he he's good at paying respect to people's lineage their f familial or or homeland uh, all that good stuff. So yeah, that's that that's cool. So uh, unfortunately, no, this was just a bunch of trees kind of thrown together. Some of these trees absolutely do not belong in Alaire State Park. So I'm offended. No, I'm not. <laughs> um, anyway, they're just basically playing a, a game of tag tag with uh, Amka, and um, whatever, man. Everybody's trying to use their powers. So you you get to see a bit of their powers in effect in, in, in actual usage. That's cool. That's one of the ways that you're going to get to know all of these characters and make no mistake. There are a lot of characters on this team and we don't know who half of them are. That's real talk. All right. So that's going to say a lot about the pacing of the book as we go forward. I'm understanding, at least I, I'm, I'm starting to derive the idea that the pacing of this book is going to be very different from a book like, let's say, the champ. Uh, excuse me, this is the champions. Uh, very unlike the pacing of the Avengers, because in the Avengers you've got just action and action and action. It's like there's a director just screaming action over and over again in a freaking megaphone because yeah, like there's not enough movement. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, that's not what we're going to get in this comic book, from my understanding, which is a good thing. Again, a lot of characters in here. And it doesn't seem like we're going to be skipping on a lot of characters. We're going to get a little bit of each character uh, uh, in every issue of this comic book. We're going to... Um, so, so therefore, in order to understand these characters, these new characters, we're going to have to see them in action, but we're also going to have to see them at ease. We're going to have to see them in stressful situations, combat and non-combat related. We're going to have to see them in all sorts of different walks in life including how they walk, all sorts of different uh, understandings of these characters in order to get who they all are. I mean, realistically, even with somebody like Red Locust, who is she? What can she do? We get a brief understanding of what she could do in this issue. 
and it's still not enough to really go on. We finally get a little information on Kureishi, which I actually love the character already just based on his name. And again, I'm hoping that his lineage is going to be discussed why that is his name. Um, I figure that's actually his name also, but, you know, what the hell do I know? I don't make the comics, I just read them. Um, but this comic book is, is definitely slower paced. You'll have action, but we're mostly going to have uh, moments where we're getting to know each other. And that's a good thing. To me, that's a solid good thing because it's more opportunities that yeah, more opportunities to learn who these characters are. It's going to be kind of crucial again, especially with so many new characters here. There's also a new bad guy here. Well, I can't really say that. Go ahead and check out the book, and you'll remember from the first series of Nova. And no, I'm not talking about Rishi Ryder. The first series that involved um, uh, Sam Alexander. I think that was volume five, but the legacy numbers, they are what they are. Um, uh, we got to see this character disappear from the Black Order. Uh, okay, no more hints. No more hints. And we saw where... Okay, one more hint. Where she went... <laughs> no more hints now. And she's freed from that. Okay, I'm going to stop talking because I feel like I'm telling you exactly who it is. No, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But if you want to see more about what happened to the Black Order when they were facing off against the world, particularly in this, uh, this individual case, Sam Alexander, here's where that story continues. And uh, me likey. <laughs> me likey. Most of this book, however, is focused around um, uh, Spider-Man, Miles Morales, who kind of gets a new name in this. Um, and uh, an Ankobut Athani. Eth yeah, there we go. An Ankobut Athani. So this means this roughly translates to the second spider. Um, uh, it's more like a. Uh, uh, spider a second time. <laughs> um, that's fine because the meaning is actually a whole lot deeper in Arabic, but in English, it translates really well to second spider, you know, the, or you could say the other spider, <laughs> you know, the, almost like the spider clone, <laughs> but, uh, we don't want to get into Spider-Man and clones and just, no, 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 stop, just stop, stop right there. Um, I like this. I like this. I, I love this name. I know it's not going to be his permanent name. It can't be his permanent name. It wouldn't quite work, but in Arabic, it would totally freaking work. Here, though, most of what we got is Spider-Man having to deal with um, him being responsible inadvertently, although with his permission, to uh, to the, the death of this girl uh, in uh, it's somewhere in Dubai or somewhere in the UAE. Uh, I think it was Dubai. Anyway, she, um, yeah, just go and check out the last issue, the previous issue for what happened there. He knows that this is his fault. He knows this is his fault. He chose his friends without thinking about the, the, the greater consequences. And that consequence was literally just line of sight over here. And it's weighing on him. And it's funny. I know that's, that, that, you know, the second spider is much stronger than Peter Parker, but that doesn't matter. You could be the Hulk actual brawn before he became brawn when he was just totally awesome Hulk. And the weight of guilt, man, is not a physical weight that you can just hoist on your shoulders and walk around with it. No, it's something that's going to weigh you down in your blood. And that's exactly what Miles Morales is feeling here. And it shows like it actually bleeds into the comic book uh, right into the reader's lap. And you feel it. You feel the weight of the guilt that he's carrying around. It ain't just Daredevil <laughs> that's going to deal with guilt in the comic books, man. Miles is getting a healthy dose of it. And I don't know how well we can judge the next issue by the cover, but this is <laughs> apparently the next cover coming up. And just, wow, man. Miles is dealing with an awful lot. And he's young. So it, he's not going to handle it in the best ways. He's going to make mistakes that an adult wouldn't make. And it's perfectly reasonable that he would. And it's not like he has a whole lot of adult peers around him, right? So this is going to hurt. This is going to be painful. I'm telling you right now, uh, a comic book like this with all of the, the, just all the teen angst that's in there, you know, 
a book like the Teen Titans can have a lot of action in it because you know a lot of those characters. There are a few new characters that are showing up there, but we really learn about those characters not in the fight scenes, but rather in the uh, the downtime scenes. That's where you really get to understand those characters, right? Well, there are more new characters being explored here. And I'm saying this right now, man. Few people handle teams the way that uh, Jim Zub handles teams. Just go back and look at his run on the Uncanny Avengers. He knows how to handle a team and give everybody their due diligence. And he's going to do that here. It's it's evident in what he's doing. He's he's taking care of a main team, you know, an original team member, I should say. And he's showing, you know, that's uh, Spider-Man. And he's also showing us a little bit of Qureshi. We're, giving, we're getting a little bit of what Qureshi can not only do, but how he responds to stimuli around him. I'm loving the way that this book is, is, is flowing right now. And that's really all that's happening. Every single transition is seamless. It, it genuinely feels like somebody's just uh, creating a quilt, but one of those cool quilts where each panel on the quilt is telling a different story. And that's perfect. Perfect for this book, for this genuinely, this team building book. Holy crap, I just said team building and all of a sudden I understand it. He's basically telling a Dungeons and Dragons team building story. That's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. That's not a bad model to follow. <laughs> anyway, guys, this is a really good issue where, again, even if you're just learning how to write, you want to emulate writing styles. This is a great style to emulate. The idea of everything doesn't have to be punch people in the face. Rather, it can be that fight that you can't win with your fists. You can't ninja kick this fight. This is really good. Anyway, guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, class dismissed.